WJBD Salem Centralia. All right, we're back. We are back. Back again. No, welcome back. And welcome back. And it is the uh, WJBD Radio Nowhere post-post-game show. Uh, Coach, continue on with what we were talking about. Um, what did you think of the formation of the team? Well, the, the formation of the team was uh, severely lacking. Um, they were supposed to be in an S-pocket fullback uh, sword file. And uh, instead, they were S like a snake. A and, snake? Uh, S like a snake. Okay. Uh, over to you. Uh, what do you think about the uh, S uh, sword file formation? Does that work for them in the past or not? Yeah, in the past, uh, we've run a lot of uh, M formations, a lot of mm-hmm. N, mm-hmm. possibly even NOP. Now, are we going to are we going to see that? Uh, Probably going to run an isosceles triangle. Now, the isosceles triangle, back to you, Coach. What do you think about that idea? The isosceles triangle, is that going to come into focus, or shall we leave that one in the dumpster? Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. I think you do. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What? I I feel like if if the field was watered down to the proper saturation, that uh, we probably could have won this game. Back over to you, is saturation an issue, yes or no? No, but we probably need to get some different colored field turf. I've seen some schools have blue and red. I'm thinking perhaps maybe like a, a, a green-gray mix would, green, would green, help. Green-gray mix. Back to you, Coach. What do you think, green-gray or red and blue? What the, do you think? The grass was three centimeters too tall for the playing conditions. Do you think the height matters when it comes to saturation, or is everything uh, a factor? Back it, to you. The slip and slide didn't work properly. Back to you. Uh, the lack of goalpost probably was also another thing, or chalking for out of bounds marker. I saw one of the S coach back to you. What what chalk do you prefer? Uh, if the ceiling had been put on the stadium before it rained, it probably would. have Do we kept use the, the ceiling? Back to you. Uh, I don't know. I hate to cut you off there, ceiling. but tell me about the centrifugal force used to motivate the players' forward motion. Anybody? Me? Uh, yeah. No. The flux capacitor formation. No. When the 1,500 fans ran into the field, it kind of gave us an advantage. And we decided to... I'm done with that. We're back. Welcome back. It's Radio Nowhere. It's Matt Donahoe. Chad and, Spray. And Steve Stein. And uh, we are here uh, as we are every week when we aren't cut off by um, the Illini postgame show. Uh, That's right. We are back. The Radio Nowhere WJBD band aid of, of we are the show. Yeah, we are the band aid. When there's nothing left to put on the air, we're on. That's us. And uh, we kicked things off with a song. It's the first song off of U2's Octung Baby uh, album from, I don't even know if I want to look up when this was, 91 Zoo Station. Ahmed Baby? No, not not that. It's Octung Baby. Okay. So, what do you guys think of the new U2 album that's out? I'm in an outrage that it's being given away free. No, I I don't care. I don't know why people are in such an uproar. Haven't heard it, any of it. But you know you own it, right, Steve? I don't have an iPhone. If you have an iTunes account, you have. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think I might have an iTunes account. I'm pretty sure you do. I mean, I think that's where you burned some CDs before. Okay. Do you not have so if so that happened what, I use two it weeks quite ago. Often. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I haven't even listened to it. I've got an iTunes account. I haven't listened to it. Uh, Steve, were you mad that you got a free U2 CD? No. Do you know? Do you even know what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know what you're talking okay. about. No, I, yeah. Chad, were you upset? Outraged. What? Through, my, through my computer against the wall. Why? Okay. Why? Why weren't you outraged? Because it makes me no difference. Free, not free, whatever. I mean. What just people looking for a reason to complain about something? But do you not think it's a little sneaky? Oh, well, explain. 
I mean, they are putting something into your account that's not yours, that you didn't want or ask for. Hit delete. I mean, it's free. free well, you can, you can del- originally, now they fixed it since then, but originally you couldn't delete it. Well, I mean, you could delete it off your phone or whatever, your computer, but it would always be in your account. Well, if it's fixed, then re- nah, no harm, no foul. You're just pretty mellow about it, aren't you? Yeah, it's a free CD. I mean, a well, free album. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I said I said CD. It's not actually CD. It's a it's an album. It's a free MP3. digital music. Free digital music. Yeah. I'm How dare they? Going to get worked up over something. It's definitely not going to be that. I mean, we give Radio Nowhere away for free every week. Yeah. We just don't force it on people. You can't delete it either. Yet. <coughs> Until, okay, wow. We've got professionals in the studio tonight. I like we've, to hit over to the corner. We've got uh, Steve coughing on air, and Chad is eating on the air. So um, the height of professionalism here at Radio's Band-Aid, uh, Radio Nowhere. That's it. And uh, we are going to be playing lots of cool music tonight. Steve, you wanted to knock it off. Steve, you wanted to play a song. I give, did. Yeah, I give, me that, give me that song that you wanted Which, to play. the first one or the second we, one? The, the first one that we talked about. Okay. We always try to kick off with something to kind of get people's attention at the top of the hour. This is the one you said I'd get like tired of within like so many seconds. 15 seconds, yeah. And this is one. I'm not even sure what the song is, so let's. let's well, maybe let's if you put your headphones on, you would hear it. We don't have them. Don't so, have them. Gone. Well, what is our producer doing, Steve? His normal I, I don't job, know. Normal. Track three, by the way. Okay, I'm going to turn this on, and you're not even going to play it for us, are you? You're I, just going to like no, on it. No, I'm going to. I'm going to turn this on, track three, and you tell me, it would this have been a good song to start the show with? Get everybody's attention and say, "Hey, am that's I, an interesting, an interesting show." So, am it, I going to be able to hear it? Yeah, I'm going to turn here. Hold on. Okay, would that have been a good song Absolutely. to start the show? Oh, yeah, for about 10 seconds. No, I disagree. Move this. Steve, shake that body for me. No, don't. Nobody wants to see that. Okay, hold on. People, don't you know, don't you know it's about time? Can you hear the jam? It's so, about time. Are you, what? Are you sick of it yet? No. You're not? No, I love it. Technotronic, how, okay, what'd they have? Move this? What was their big one? Pump up the jam. Pump yeah. up the jam. Move this. But if Kid K is, didn't somebody from that group break off to do one of the Turtle songs? Yes, did the the Turtle Power song, right? Is yeah, that right? I, I knew there were Turtles. Not, I, I mean, and I think the the thing is that uh, you know, Vanilla Ice kind of gets the uh, attention, so to speak. Yeah. But hold on, I'm looking up. It's actually. Partners in Crime. Uh huh. The city of Brookport. Do we know Partners in Crime? Was y- Yakid K part of Partners in Crime? I thought. I mean, maybe not. But All right, I thought so too. Hold on. Here we go. Here's here's Turtle Power from 1990, no less. You remember that Turtle nope. Power? No. Nope. You don't remember the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles song? Not really. The, what Steve wants it to hear is specifically, go ninja, go ninja, go. Yeah, can go, we please go. hear that? And I feel like that one gets a lot of play or, or a, a lot, lot of attention. Play. A lot of attention. Well, back then. Well, even nowadays, there was a commercial of it. Did you see that? Nope. Yeah. Did you see is. the commercial? Yeah, there's a commercial. Um, let's see. Vanilla Ice is popping up everywhere. He's yeah. kind of had a bit of a comeback. He, he plays like a stock boy. Yeah, stocking, stocking turtle macaroni and cheese. Yeah, and... The mom's kind of enamored with him, and the kid's kind of like, "What's going on?" Because yeah. they're singing "Go Ninja, Go Ninja, yeah. Go." Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. That's a real commercial. Look it up. Pass. So um, we have wandered far afield from where we started. I think um, we started with the post game show, and we post talk- post game post post game show, and we've wandered into. Uh, talking about a lot of things, but maybe not playing a lot of things. So let's play uh, a tune here from... Um, Move Con- this? Nope. Concrete Blonde on WJBD. It's been too hard. It's been- Is that Shakespeare I hear? No, it's his sister. Oh. I would be willing to bet we are the only radio 
station and show that has still that still plays, if not still even heard of Shakespeare's sister as a band. I don't care. You don't care? Oh, oh that clever. was the name of the song. That was from 92. And uh, we've actually played one of their other songs, arguably their bigger hit uh, a few months ago. And I'm using hit in quotes Quote. there. Stay. Yeah. Stay. Kind of a, well, I was going to say a ballad, but then it kind of turns into a weird melodramatic power ballad thing at one point. I like point. it. No, I like it too, but uh, stay. So we're back here on WJBD. We are WJBD's Band-Aid uh, Radio Nowhere. It's Matt Donahoe, Chad Spray, and Steve Stein. And uh, Steve, you found another gem that you wanted to sample for us. What'd you find? Crisscross, I missed the bus. So, okay, hand it over. Really? Yup. All I've right, so. Lost that picture. Chad, do you, do you remember Crisscross? I remember Jump and the Backwards Clothes. Right. I mean, those were the. That's. One the, of the crosses is dead. Yeah. Passed away. Uh, yeah, passed away about five, six years ago, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, Crisscross were a couple of kids that rapped and did Crisscross will make you jump, jump. jump. The Daddy Mac will make you jump, jump. 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 I always hated that song. Yeah, and then so we're we're wandering through the WJBD vault here, and Steve finds Chris Cross. Uh, I miss the bus. Um, yeah, somehow I just found another one of their songs, but I can't find that one. So we're in the whole Chris Cross era of of music right now as we explore the Apparently. WJBD music vault. And if you can't find that, how about the Muppets version of Kokomo? Oh, Kermy. Oh, okay. You know what? Since you bring, do you have that right in front of you? I do. Give it here real quick. Give me, give me that song. I like the Kermits or the the, the Kermits. I like the. Muppets. I found it. I found it. Hold on, hold on. We're onto something. Will else that now. be just Kermits? Kermits. <laughs> It'd be Kermits. Kermits. There would be. Hold on, just a second. Here's the thing. I like the Muppets. Chad, you a Muppet fan? Oh yeah. Steve. Yeah. Muppet fan. Okay. Now, now hold on a second. Because here. Kermit. Yeah. Kermit. Come over here. Oh, let's just take a nice walk along the sand. Oh, isn't this perfect? Is there any other place you'd rather be? Well? Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh. Oh, that is... That's not good. I, I hate Miss Piggy. <laughs> you hate Miss Piggy? I, I agree. Look, 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 there's a co- topic of conversation. Well, I want overrated Muppet can't stand Miss Piggy. I'd well, like to see her on my dinner table. Well, I... Oh, my gosh. I that's, wouldn't even go that route. That's pretty brutal. That's... <laughs> I've seen brutal things today. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and here's the thing. Are you I, ready I for like cross. I like no, not not yet. I like the Muppets. Yeah, but I hate that song, Kokomo. Yeah, and the only thing that makes it worse is the Muppets singing it. <laughs> I mean, and I like the Muppets, even with this latest film. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, and, oh and, I just found our wait next a minute. song. And do you know what? Uh, do you know what I would call that song? That version of. Of Kokomo by the Muppets. We are on air. I know. You know what I'd call Radio Nowhere now presents If It Was Possible to Punch a Song in the Mouth, This Song Would Have No Teeth. That's right. If it was possible. We haven't done that in a long time. I know. We haven't. That's why I wanted to bring that back up. If it was possible to punch a song in the mouth, this song would have no teeth. I like the Muppets. I even like the Beach Boys. Kokomo, low point for the Beach Boys. And then the remake of it by the Muppets, even lower. Kermy. Oh. I hate Piggy. Okay, I have our next song, and you cannot look at it to see what it is. That's always a good. Okay, do we want to do weather first or play this song? Um, play this song, and then I'll do weather. You got to let us know the track it's tra- it's track four. Track four. This is a surprise attack from Steve Stein here on Radio Nowhere at WJBD. Okay, I didn't look, but I did listen, and um, I think we're going to go into weather. Did you know that the song just ended, Steve? Yeah, I kind of gathered that. Yeah, it just ended. That's a He's shame. He's pouting. Oh, oh. Well, tell you what. Why don't you go turn on one of the the uh, True TV channels or Fox where they run it 
20, the show cops 24 hours a day, and you can just listen to your heart's content. How's that sound? No, I don't like it. Don't you? Nope. Do you like biscuits from John's Biscuit Emporium? I love John's Biscuits from John's Everyone Biscuits. does, and they bring you our weather tonight. Hello. Hi there, very good pal of mine. It is so fortuitous that we can have natural and casual conversations about all manner of things. Biscuits even. Do you mean the nummy, only fresh biscuits of John's Biscuit Emporium? Yes, dude. Those never ever day old biscuits are a fine quality food product for eating. Be confident in those biscuits from John's Biscuit Emporium. True dat, biscuit eater buddy. But how might I eat such a fine, hot, fresh, only just baked biscuit item? Verily, you must put the biscuit in your mouth and chew up them. Please heed my unblinking wisdom. You cannot consume biscuits intravenously. Nor can you eat them with your knee or your ear. And hugging your biscuit is simply not proper, almost uncouth. A pat or a thumbs up, maybe. I thumb up all the racks when I go there. Everyone, Everyone knows, knows where, where and how, how to arrive at John's, John's Biscuit, Biscuit Emporium in Salem. Salem. Feet, car, bike, scoot on your back. Follow the delicious freshness downtown to John's. Fly to the moon on the delectable wings of a biscuit and never come home. I know I can go to John's Biscuit Emporium in Salem for fresh biscuit and not nothing else besides. My confidence in these eaten biscuits abounds. You magnificent biscuit, I read your book. And uh, as always, thank you to John's Biscuit Emporium. And um, here's weather with Steve Stein. Tonight, it looks like we're going to get down to a low of 56 degrees with a mostly clear sky. Tomorrow, today, being Sunday, it's going it? to be sunny with 82 degrees. Sunday night, mostly clear with a, high, a low of 57 uh, looking on through the week, it looks like we're going to have highs in the low 80s and sunny conditions. Uh, it looks like our next chance of rain is going to be Thursday night, um, where it looks like we've got a 70% chance with a low of 61. That's your forecast, and I'm Steve. Thank you, Steve. And that is brought to us by John's Biscuit Emporium. Hey, did you see that there's a new another biscuit place in town? Is it new? Yeah, it's fairly new. Is it? I haven't heard about it, but... They can't be as good as John's Biscuits, right? I, well, I, I don't know how they could, but uh, I, I, I saw them. I, mean, I got a huge sign, and looks like it's a, kind of a big deal. Huh. Okay. Well, I'm sticking with John's Biscuits. They're our show sponsor. and um, Me too. Phantom Biscuit or not, sticking with John's. Well, yeah. Hey, Chad, you handed me a CD to play. Um, who is this? Uh, it'd be Frankie Lane. What's the story about this CD? Uh, we have a story about this. Apparently he was a big band crooner, probably, I'm guessing, 40s, 50s, or 60s. But he's, I guess, most known for his Western themes. Uh, he also did and sang Blazing Saddles, uh, North to Alaska. I think we're going to hear a song called Bowie Knife. It's got a Western theme to it. And where are we going to hear that, Chad? Radio Nowhere, WJBD. I Band- got off the riverboat in New Orleans in the spring of eight. WJBD's Band-Aid Radio Nowhere. That is the Pet Shop Boys and a song called Go West. We thought that would fit in well with our Western song we played right before that, and that was Frankie Lane, uh, Bowie Knife. And uh, Chad and I actually had never heard of Frankie Lane. Nope. Until, what, a couple months ago? Yeah, Maybe three months ago? Now, obviously, I mean, this is somebody who's had a, a, a long history, like Chad was talking about. He started off as a kind of a big band crooner era type. crooner, yeah. turned into a country singer. Yeah. Uh, and then we were over at, what's the name of that place? In uh, the Louis? Record Exchange. The Record Exchange, which my wife described as overwhelming. Overwhelming in a good way, though. Yeah, I mean, it's just packed the walls with CDs, tapes, albums. You name it, media-wise, they probably have it. And um, it's over in St. Louis, and they have just a bunch of basically used stuff. And they were playing it, and Chad and I just kind of became enamored with the Frankie Lane stuff we were listening to. And It's very good just to have on in the background while you're doing something. Kind of catchy. And, and yeah, there's lots of, lots of cool stuff. So um, Chad tracked that CD down for us, so thank you, Chad. No problem. And then the Pet Shop Boys uh, go west. Don't hear enough Pet Shop Boys on the radio. 
nowadays. Pro- Although the- probably a reason. <laughs> and uh, Steve is telling me that we have a phone call. Steve put somebody through. Uh, he, yeah, he. You know, we do this once in a while, and I don't know that it ever ends well. But let's go ahead and give this one a shot. Uh, uh, Radio Nowhere, hello, you are on the air. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you speak up? Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm I'm fine, uh, sir. How are you? Um, I'm great. Oh, good. Um, can I help you with something? Well, I uh, heard you talking about my business on the air a little bit ago. Your oh, John's Biscuits Emporium. Love love your place. I I, I think I think we've talked to you before. No. Those fresh biscuits are great. No. Yes, they are. Oh no! Please don't not, sell yourself short, sir. They not are fresh. I'm sorry. What? Not fresh. Okay, okay, sir. First of all, we love John's Biscuit Emporium. Quit being and so I'm, modest. I'm happy for you, but I'm not involved or affiliated with John's Biscuit Emporium. We just ran the ad. What? Yeah, you business. You, yeah, we not. No other sponsor. Maybe he's with a band. Are you with a band? <laughs> are you a next you, pet shop huh? boy? I believe I heard you talking about a, a new biscuit place opening down. Oh yeah, yeah, it was referenced. Yeah, I, I, I am the owner of that place. Oh uh, well, well, welcome to Salem. Give us some info. It's Donny Donny's Biscuits. Oh, so okay, so just to be clear, you are not affiliated with John's Biscuit Emporium. Correct. You are, in fact, the proprietor of a new store in town called Donny's Biscuits. Yes, you're catching on. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, tell us um, what I, sets you apart from John's. Well, I just and I just have to say we're going to have to proceed with caution because John's Biscuit Emporium is our sponsor. Okay, that's great. Um, I, I, in my business, uh, we only sell day old biscuits. I'm sorry. Can you? We believe that uh, biscuits are like fine wine, and they. Uh, they get better with age, and uh, our biscuits are at least day old. Uh, you can actually get them older than that if you'd like. Uh, I prefer six to eight days personally. Well, well, what's the oldest? Like you know, special occasion wise, how how far back are we talking? Our vintage biscuits, which uh, is pretty pricey. Um, you're, you're talking probably. I think the oldest one we've got right now is going on eighteen years. And what's what would something like that set me back? Ballpark guess estimate. That one, we're asking for um, two fifty. Okay, I need to ask you a question. Hold on, is that two hundred fifty dollars or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, thanks. Oh, that that's okay. Yeah. Okay, I I have a question. Um, and what'd you say your name was? Donnie. Donnie. Uh, can I call you Donnie? No. Okay. Uh, what What should I call you? Donnie's Biscuits. Uh, you want me to call you by the name of your store? Yes. You want me to call you Donnie's Biscuits? That is correct. I, okay. So, sir. Um, Donnie's Biscuits? Okay. So, Donnie's Biscuits. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have to ask you to speak up just a little bit. I, I don't know that you are properly reaching the volume we need here. Okay. Better. Thank you, sir. Um, Donnie's Biscuits. Th- um, first of all, I, I need to just clarify something. Do you sell... So you're saying that in addition to freshly baked biscuits, you no, sell... No, no, absolutely not. We do not sell fresh. Like I said, I believe that biscuits... Get better with age. So if I, I will not sell anything newer than day old. So if I come into your store, you will not sell me a freshly baked biscuit. That is correct. But I can get. Well, that doesn't make. I mean, you have to obviously make the biscuits, right? Well, yeah. And well, I mean, why not sell them fresh? That people. That, that's. Uh, I see what's going on here. You supplied John's Biscuit Emporium with the older, harder biscuits for the biscuit pit. Pit, I'm guessing is do you have is that what's going on? I can't imagine any other use. No, I'm I'm not affiliated with John's whatsoever. I like that. Like I said several times, I, I believe biscuits get better with age. 
Um, our biscuits are delicious. Um, they are slathered in butter, jelly, honey, anything of your, your choosing. Well, and that is one place where you set yourself apart from John's Biscuits. He does not believe uh, in any kind of condiments or toppings or anything like that. Well, I, yeah, I guess that's true because I believe in nothing but um, you can't get a plain fresh biscuit at our place. So, so if I came into your place wanting a plain biscuit, a plain fresh biscuit, I'm out of luck. You are correct. What about a plain day old biscuit? No. Not. I can't just come in and get a biscuit. Not a not a plain one. All right. What if? What about just like with a pat of butter? No. Each each of our biscuits get a full stick and a half of butter on it. If you want butter on it. If you want jelly, uh, st- we do a stick and a half. We do two a jars. stick. Wait, a stick and a half of butter per biscuit. Have you ever tried it? Well, no, because I think I would have a heart attack if I had that much butter in. Well, I, I mean, how much butter do you go through a day? Um, it depends on how many biscuits that stuff we sell that day, but average on day a- on average day. We go through, well, yesterday I had to order three more semis full, so... Of butter. Yeah, three to four semis. And of butter. Of butter. Not like this butter. is on and, a daily basis. And you get three semis of butter daily. Yes. And On you, average. And do you find yourself... Sometimes it's like eight or nine. Eight or nine semis during what? Like, during like peak, peak you know peak times of the year. And when would that be? Um, when is the peak time of the year for day old or February, longer? Valentine's Day is, is a really, really busy uh, buttered biscuit day. For, for biscuits. Um, I'm sorry, what what day? Valentine's Day. For buttered biscuits? Yes. Do you like do like a heart-shaped uh, biscuit? No. Okay. Well, why would you then? Do, do you do a lot of business? Oh, we do tons. I, 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 I mean, in my opinion, we do more business than John's. But oh, that's that's a big talk. We've never, we've never actually counted, but I, I feel like we uh, at least compete very closely with them. Um, now, John's, you know, has that huge store. Yours didn't seem that big when I drove by. Most of ours is underground. You're, it's underground. Yes. The food, the biscuits. Uh, I've deemed the. UV rays from the sun actually take some of the flavor from the biscuits. Okay. And uh, plus, it's easier to keep the butter cold underground, even from melting. Okay. okay. What, uh, so you keep the butter underground to keep it cold, keep it from yes. melting? Yes. Okay. Okay. So here's a question John's Biscuit Emporium, Big Emporium, um, you know, you can get biscuits pretty much any time, day or night. When can we come to your place and get them? I'm assuming you've got, like, breakfast times. No, not usually. Not usually. That, that implies there's some wiggle room. You won't explain. Yeah, when are you open? Typically, um, well, I'll, I'll just kind of go through I mean, it, it's, it's kind of sporadic. It, it, every day we, we kind of mix it up just to keep uh, customers on their feet a little bit. Um Monday, we're open 8 to 4. That's Tuesday, the, yeah, that's Tuesday. about, I mean, yeah, because it's not really a dinner. For, so, okay, I get 8 to 4. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Tuesday, we're open uh, 9 to 1. Okay. Keeping in the breakfast, the yeah. lunch, the yeah. kind of a brunchish day. Wednesday, we're open from 12.45 to 1. 12.45, uh, you're, you're open for 15 minutes on Wednesday? Yeah, we we got to clean the ovens that day. But but you're still open for fifteen well, yeah, minutes. For fifteen minutes. I mean, it's it's a heck of a rush. You should you should be there. Okay, so so Wednesdays you're open for. Is that is there some wiggle room there? Of how long you're open? Or are you open exactly fifteen minutes? Exactly. We have a buzzer. We actually, you know those tornado sirens on poles. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've got one of those in the parking lot because people line up. And it, it goes off to let them know when the doors are open. And they rush in. Uh, like I said, it's, it's the most crazy 15 minutes you've ever seen. And For day-old biscuits. At exactly 15 minutes after that, the alarm goes off again. And 
Actually, the alarm goes off 15 seconds before we go into lockdown. Go ahead. Yep. When, when locked, I mean, they've got 15 seconds to clear the building. During, then, before then lockdown. The gates, then, the ga- then the gates come down. Um, and if, if they get stuck in there, there there's some people. It doesn't happen very often, but there have been instances where people have been stuck in there overnight when the oven's going to cleaning mode. It, so it, It's not good. They're stuck underground with just an obscene amount of butter with day-old to 18-year-old biscuits. Well, if, if the customers that do get locked in are lucky enough to get stuck in the basement with the butter, they're okay. What about the unlucky ones? If they're upstairs with the ovens? Yeah. Yeah, there's usually, usually a hospital visit. A hospital visit in their future. Correct. Okay, so that's Wednesday. What what about for the rest of the week? Um, Thursday, depending upon when the ovens get cooled, usually we're open by 1. P.M.? We're open till about 6.30. So 1 p.m. to 6.30? Kind of a dinner day. Yeah. If you choose, yeah. Okay, so Thursday. Right. and the, This is the most confusing schedule I think I've ever... What about Fridays? Friday, we are open from uh, midnight till one uh, twenty-five. Midnight until one twenty-five a.m. Yes. Why? Are you, why don't you open until midnight on Friday? Um, that's just when we can get our employees to come in that night. Well, if they're your employees, you would think that you, being the owner, would set the schedule. One, one would think so, but they're very stubborn. All right. What about Saturday? Um, Saturday, we open up at one thirty-five. Excuse me? Wait. One thirty-five p.m. or a.m.? A.m. So, okay. Sir? Okay, no, wait, just so In clear. In all honesty, we're actually open Monday. So, really, and truthfully, Saturday, we're not open. But, you know, on, on our schedule, we put one thirty-five a.m., but it's actually Sunday a.m. No, we're on Saturday still because, well, no, okay. Hold, okay, I, okay, wait. So you open Friday at midnight, which is really Saturday morning. Yes. Okay, so we'll say 12.01 a.m. It's not that confusing. I mean, if you really think about it, it's not that confusing. Well, I'm trying here. Um, so you're open midnight to 1.25 a.m. You're open for an hour and 25 minutes. Yes. Essentially Saturday morning. Yes. And then you close for 10 minutes and open uh, a... Yeah, typically 10 minutes. That gives... Julio time to come in with mop. And then you open up at one thirty five AM. Right. right. And this is still Saturday morning, early Saturday morning. Yes. Until when? Until uh typically it's about three thirty five and thirty seconds. In the morning. In the morning. So then you're open for another less than two hours. Right. And then when are you open? So that's Saturday morning. I mean, so so you're closed the rest of Saturday. Yes. And what? I've done I've done tons of biscuit research, and, and all my studies indicate that th- these are the, the top biscuit selling hours. The and peak think, biscuit selling hours? Yeah, and, 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 and I mean, our, our attendance reflects that. I mean, if you, if you look at the sales, I mean, typically when we open, they're, you know, they're lined at the door, and, and biscuit sales just go up. The hours were open. Well, because they're and, the, and then the biscuit sales dropped dramatically after we closed. Well, now wait a minute. Think about what you just said. Of course, biscuit sales are going to close or are going to drop dramatically when you're closed. They're you're closed. That's like saying well, my, our ratings my, drop when we're off the air. My, my studies don't lie. Well, wait. Your your what? Your studies. I thought he said his sons don't lie. No, his studies. Don't lie. No, my sons lie quite often. <laughs> what are your sons' names? Um, do your what, son- why, what is, is, how is that relevant to my biscuit business? It's not. Do they work in the business? No. Okay. Like sorry. Said, they, they lie often. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe we can get them on that's, someday. To I mean, it, that's rule number one for my employees: don't lie. What's so, rule so, number two? So rule number one at Donnie's Biscuits is don't lie. Right? That's correct. Okay. Do you have like a whole list of rules for your employees? Yeah. 
Okay, we okay, we are running out of time. Donnie, um I want to thank you for calling and illuminating us on the other biscuit store here in town. Mm-hmm. No problem. Uh, come to come see us. Mm-hmm. Um I'm I'm afraid I, I'll of I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you come see me tonight after your show, I will set aside a biscuit like none other that you've ever had and it's got four sticks of butter on it and two bottles of honey and it'll be the best biscuit you've ever had. That and it, it's only 8 days old. That it's sounds like the last biscuit I'll ever have. I'll die. If I ate that, I would die. And I don't just mean me. I mean anybody who ate something that had four sticks of butter on it and two whatever of honey, and a, it's a it's over a week old would die. They would die. Then there's a lot of dead people walking around because that's one of our hot sellers. I, how is that even possible? That's so we have zombie biscuit eaters. No, I, I was being sarcastic. Okay, well, I, okay, Donnie, I'm going to say thank you. No, thank you. And uh, and you have a good night. Okay. You too. Okay. Goodbye. That's uh. I'm not even sure that was a call. That's uh, Donnie, Donnie Biscuit, Donnie's Biscuits, Donnie's Biscuits, is- Donnie's Biscuits from Donnie's Biscuits. He likes to be called. And uh, here is, uh, I think we're going to wrap things up here on uh, Radio Nowhere. I mean, we're almost out of time here, so let's go ahead and wrap things up. We'll have one more song after this, but uh, Matt Donahoe, Chad Spray. And Steve Stein. And we are going to say, if you like what you heard, tell a friend. If you don't like what you heard. Don't tell anyone. Ever. WJBD Salem Centralia. This has been... And I Love Raisins production.